Welcome back. Today's review topic, we'll just title Related Rates 2. Um, so before we dive right in, uh, let's just focus on these two ideas here. Remember, your goal is to pick an equation that uses all the variables that are given. And second, and probably one of the most important things, is that you can only have numerical substitutions for constants. Otherwise, we're going to derive and then substitute. So we focused on triangles yesterday. Our goal today is really to attack the cone. All right, so several things we need to about, know about the cone. First of all, it's volume formula. And we see these on our bite-sized quizzes all the time. Volume should be one-third pi r squared h. Okay, and that can't be our holdup. You better have these formulas memorized by now. The second thing we need to know about the cone is the cone is a little special because it uses a ratio. Okay, we always write the ratio from the radius to the height. Okay, and usually those are given and we substitute those in there. But there's usually, usually a ratio that we want. And then thirdly, if possible, we would like to see um, only one variable before we derive. And again, if possible. Otherwise, we'll have to go product rule if there's enough information. Okay, but again, many times you can substitute and have only one variable and then derive. So let's attack our first problem. I apologize if you can't read it very well. I'll read it out loud. I, I did copy it from a book here. Um, I see that it says example four. An underground conical tank standing on its vertex is being filled with water at a rate of 18 pi feet cube per minute. If the tank has a height of 30 and a radius of 15, how fast is the water level rising when the height is 12? Okay, so again, just like we did yesterday, we're going to sketch ourselves a nice little picture. They told us it's on its vertex. And then the first thing I'm going to pay attention to, it says, it's being filled with water at a rate. Okay, they're giving me a derivative, and I don't have to guess. Look at the units. The second you see cubed, you should know we're talking about d, v, d, t. And since it's being filled, I know it's becoming greater, so I'm going to say 18, positive 18 pi. If the tank has a height of 30 and a radius of 15, Okay, there's the ratio we're going to use, a height of 30 and a radius of 15. How fast, so they're asking for a rate, is the water level rising? If I'm talking about how fast it's rising, am I talking about the radius or the height? Hopefully you're saying the height. So how fast is the height changing, specifically when it's 12 feet deep? So again, the second I say deep, you should assume height as well. Okay, so first and foremost, is anything constant? As water pours into a cone, is the height always going to be the same? Well, clearly not. And is the radius always going to be the same? Well, you can see that it changes as you have more or less water. So there is no constant here. There is nothing you can plug in before. So my goal, of course, is to write my ratio. So radius over height equals, and I kind of bubbled it in, Radius is 15 when the height is 30. And I'm going to reduce that if possible. They're both divisible by 5. Um, so I'm going to say, well, I guess they're both divisible by 15. That would be a lot easier. 1 half. And then I'm going to write both of them. I'm going to cross multiply, and I'm going to solve for both h and for r. So I'm going to say 2r equals h. Or if I wanted to solve for r, r equals h over 2. And I don't know which one I'm going to use at the moment, but we'll put both of those down. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to pick a formula that relates all of them. And remember, I have volume here, so that's pretty much telling me to pick my volume formula. Volume equals one-third pi r squared h. And now ask yourself, do you only want to see r's or do you only want to see h's? Well, you're asked to find d h dt. That should be a big hint that you only want to see the letter H. So I'm going to box in this R and say, okay, I need to put something in place of R. Which of these two formulas would you put in place of R? Well, the one that says R, of course. So I'm going to say volume equals one-third pi. And in place of R, I'm going to say that's H over 2. Now, don't forget it was radius squared times height. Now, I think you're crazy if you try to derive next. Keep cleaning this puppy up. Volume equals one-third pi. 
If I square this fraction, I should get h squared over 4 times h. I still think you're crazy if you try to derive. Keep cleaning her up. Um, clearly, I'm going to get a 1 twelfth a pi and an h cubed. Now I'm ready to take the derivative. So again, I just want to make a note, I should be taking the derivative with respect to time. So if I don't see the letter t in my problem or variable, it's going to get us something dt. So the derivative of v is dv dt. Okay, this is not product rule or chain rule here. Okay, this is a constant and a constant. So I'm just going to keep those out front. And the derivative of h cubed is 3h squared dh dt. All right, so just to recall, I'm going to scroll back here. I was finding dh dt, and I believe I knew dv dt was 18 pi. Okay, so dv dt is 18 pi. And I'm finding dh dt, so that can stay in the problem. And I'm specifically finding it, we said, when it was 12 feet deep. So that's when my height is 12. So 3 times 12 squared. So again, I'm going to clean up here. 18 pi equals uh, pi times 48. Nope, calculated wrong. Uh, 12 will cancel with one of those. 36 dh dt. And notice that I have a pi on each side, so those will cancel. And I'll get 18 over 36, which of course reduces to 1 half equals dh dt. And again, I just want to take note of my units. That should be feet per minute since I found a rate. So there you have it, one nice simple cone problem. All right, so now that we've attacked the cone problem, let's attack a cylinder problem. So example two. Oil is leaking from a pipeline on the surface of a lake and forms an oil slick whose volume is increasing at a rate of 200 cubic centimeters per minute. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a moment. It does say volume increases, so it's positive, and there's my word rate. So I know dv dt is a positive 200. The oil slick forms, takes the form of a right circular cylinder with both its radius and height changing with time. At the instant when the radius is equal to 50 and the height is equal to 0.2 centimeters, the radius is increasing at a rate. Okay, so there's my word rate. My dr dt is 2.5 centimeters. At this instant, instance, instant, what is the rate of change of height? So the derivative of height with respect to time. All right, so why don't we just go ahead and draw out a cylinder? So it's not probably very deep. It says it's leaking out, and so I'm picturing a nice little circular pool and some sort of height to it. And clearly there's going to be a radius and a little height to my cylinder. So can you picture what's happening? Oil's leaking, so it's coming out, and it's forming this pool, okay, and the pool's expanding. It's kind of going out in this direction, and it's gaining some height to it. And I know that because it says both the radius and the height are changing. So there are no constants. They are both changing. And let's just highlight that sentence because, again, that's telling me there are no constants. So all I need is to start with the formula for the volume of this shape. Well, you know, it's probably not one that we, we memorize all the time, but it's a very simple, straightforward one to get. Clearly, you're just going to take the circle which is pi r squared, and to give it some depth, you're going to multiply it by its height. So we have our volume there. Now, is it possible to get just one variable? Well, again, I, we, like we just noted, both the height and radius are changing. And in fact, you know dr dt and dh dt, so that's a big indication that you can't get one variable. And again, they're both changing. So I'm just going to derive it the way it is, of course, with respect to time. So anything that doesn't have a letter t is going to get a dt to it. Um, again, as I quickly take note and read this side, it says r squared times h, so just watch your product rule there. So I'm going to say dv dt equals, I like to leave that pi constant out front, r squared dh dt plus h times 2r dr dt. 
And again, I'm just going to quickly distribute that pi back through. So I'm going to say pi r squared dh dt plus 2 pi h r dr dt. Now, um, let's again just take note that I was only finding dh dt. That means hopefully I know everybody else. So I'm just going to say this is what I should be finding. And again, hopefully I know everybody else. I believe dv dt, they said, was positive 200. And I'm just going to take note back here, specifically when r was 50 and h was 0.2. So I can plug in my 50 squared. I've got my 2, my pi. Uh, h was 0.2, r was 50. And did we know drdt? If I scroll back up, drdt was 2.5. And you'll see how simple this is. Um, I know everybody except the hdt here. So I'm just going to quickly multiply that side together. And I've got 200 equals 2,500 pi dh dt plus, uh, I think that turns into 50 pi. Um, my goal is to solve for dh dt, so I'm just going to subtract over my 50 pi. Equals my 2,500 pi dh dt. And then, of course, divide by... 2500 pi. Now, I just want to be clear, you cannot cancel those pi's. Everybody doesn't have a pi. However, everybody does have a zero, so I can knock a zero off everybody. And then I would say everybody's divisible by five. Uh, so that would be four minus pi all over 50 pi. Final answer, dh dt. And I believe that was centimeters per minute. Our last question for the night will be a two-part question. Uh, so here we go with part A. A water bottle has the shape of a cylinder with a radius of two inches. So let's go ahead and sketch that. Okay, so I've got a nice cylinder. And they're telling me the radius is two. Let H be the depth of the water. Okay, so there's my H. Uh, measured in inches, where h is a function of time measured in seconds. Due to a leak at the bottom of the bottle, the volume of water of the bottle is changing at a rate of negative 6 pi cubed root of h cubic inches per second. So notice they tell you it's a rate, and they give it away by saying cubic inches. So it should be clear that that's dv dt, negative 6 pi cubed root of h. Now, let's ask ourselves, do we have any constants in this problem? Well, let's say I have this much water in my water bottle, um, and then all of a sudden maybe I have this much in there. Certainly the height's going to change, but what's not changing? No matter how much water I put in here, what's always the same? Hopefully you're saying you're always going to have a radius of 2. So unlike the last problem we did, the radius is not changing. Let's make a note that we have a constant and that would be a radius of 2. So I can plug that in before I derive, and that's what we've been stressing for the past two days. If you have a constant, you can plug it in before you derive. All right, so step one is to pick a formula that relates all of these, and clearly we're talking about the volume of a cylinder, which again is just a circle times the height. So volume equals pi r squared h. And remember, we just said we have that constant of 2, so I can plug that in before I derive. Volume equals pi, that's going to give me times 4h. The question says find dh dt in terms of h. So now we can take its derivative with respect to time. So dv dt is equal to, these are constants, so my 4 pi stays. The derivative of h is dh dt. Okay, notice it doesn't have a t, therefore it gets a dh dt. Um, and let's see, we knew dv dt, if I scroll back up there for a moment, uh, dv dt is negative 6 pi cubed root of h, so I can substitute that in. Negative 6 pi cubed root of h equals 4 pi dh dt, and you'll notice that the directions did say in terms of h, so I get dh dt equals negative 3 halves cubed root of h. And there you have it, part A. 
All right, all part B says is find dH dt when h equals 8. Now, this is extremely simple because you already found dH dt, oops, in part A here. So all I'm going to say is dH dt is equal to negative 3 halves when h equals 8, cubed root of 8, uh, which of course is 2. So dH dt equals negative 3. And again, we'll just watch our unit. I believe that's inches per second. Well, there you have it. We've covered our cone, which has the ratio, and our cylinder tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you in class, and have a great night.